Hello, everybody. Welcome to the second part of the presentation for today. Um, this is actually presented slightly uh, earlier uh, in Singapore conference, and we find that this is actually quite an uh, interesting topic uh, that we discussed in Singapore. Uh, the material is actually created by another L2, which is Weitia. The name is actually credited at the bottom. So we decided to share it with the, the greater universe, which is the, the Southeast Asia uh, region. So hope that everybody will like this presentation. And uh, after, the, uh, after the presentation, if you have any feedback, uh, do let us know. Uh, so at least we can uh, work and improve on it as well. Right. Uh, the part one, customer service, judging at least five minutes. So why, first question is, why do judges actually need to give customer service skills? Uh, it's actually a good living example of good behavior. So being a judge is also uh, have a customer service role, uh, mixed with a little bit of diplomacy. Uh, attitude is like an advertisement for, uh, for behaviors that you actually want to see in future events. Uh, we also rely on each other for existence in magic. Uh, players rely on you to run tournaments smoothly. And we also rely on players to, to build a, a community as well. So relate back to the previous topic that we have on community building. So everybody is there for a reason. We try to build our, uh, existence for each other. Players are always and are also still customers. So players all play magic for a different motivation. Uh, but they are all still players. There's all still customers who go to the LGS to, to purchase things and maybe to, to, uh, to talk about uh, community building and etc. Et and on top of that, uh, players are also not the only customers in store. There are also people who play uh, uh, other games. Uh, there are also people who just go there for, for uh, building packs. And some of them might not even be playing the events and yeah, you never know. So some uh, there might be some new players at the, at the store who just happen to be there and have look at, looking at the games. So ultimately, uh, judges are also the one who actually try to build uh, a tr build trust within the community so that players will actually uh, trust you and you have the best interest at their hearts. So this is some of the reasons why I feel that uh, we feel that judges will still need customer service skills. So one of the easy way to remember, uh, we are going to this acronym uh, called LEAST, L-E-A-S-T. So how do you actually do about customer service? So the first one is actually to listen. So active listening goes a long way. So to show that you are actually uh, actively listening, uh, it will be a good way to actually repeat their concern uh, to, to show that you understand what they are saying and then try to empathize on the solution or what they do. So just, just show some uh, genuine concern, just show some, show some little thoughts about the about their situation they're in and try to see whether you can put yourself into their shoes. Uh, if, if you have anything that is uh, wrong, uh, a simple story will actually be a good way to diffuse the situation. Uh, and the story goes a long way. Sometimes this uh, just just a story that actually just uh, diffuse the whole uh, situation. Ultimately, we are here uh, to solve people's problem. If we don't, uh, it will go back to square one. So people will come back and ask you uh, why why uh, what's this happening and how we get this done. And then after everything, always good to thank them so that uh, it will make players feel welcome and get, give them something uh, uh, welcome to return. So uh, the players for bringing the matter up, uh, or simple one, just thank them for even bringing the matter up so that you, you have their attention. So a simple way to actually uh, approach doing a judge call, so some of the do's and don'ts. So first thing we have to do is we separate players. So how do you separate, separate players? We just go there. Uh, if they are actually having a heated debate, uh, the first thing is to separate them so that at least once you break them up, uh, they will not uh, talk to each other. Usually when uh, they talk, sometimes uh, things will get back. They might talk louder and louder over each other and nobody will pay attention. So in order to do that, the best way is to first separate the players.
Um, so one of the things when you do a uh, judge call is when people raise up their hands and they call judge, judge, uh, do take notes, uh, move with haste, but don't run. Uh, just acknowledge that the player, uh, you can just do go about raising your hands in the air to show that you are aware of them. Uh, just walk, walk with haste, uh, walk fast, but try not to run uh, in case uh, there might be certain obstacles as well. So just take all the surroundings when you approach the judge call. Uh, do make eye contact with them, uh, but not in the lovey dovey way. Uh, so basically, what we can do is we can try to get ourselves lowered down to them, uh, eye level, or we can just bend down a little bit, uh, so that we can try to get uh eye contact with them, and then we try to answer their calls. So, uh, lang uh, I would say sometimes non the 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 non non verbal uh communications actually make a long way. So that will actually get them uh, in, uh, in, a, in a very good way to for, for a judge call. And then after that, uh, try to explain your rulings that you gave. Uh, our own, ultimately, being a good customer service is actually explain, educate, so that the players understand why they're being penalized. And in the future, they understand this. Uh, try to make it try to make the ruling uh, uh in a way that is all uh is the, the 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 results you give is it's not personal so try not to apologize when you give a ruling that is related so like uh for example don't just don't say sorry but you are uh, you are you are given the game loss so just educate them on why uh they are being penalized and why they are actually uh doing that so it's it's more like the, the action uh something like uh the action that you did resulted in this error is making you getting game loss, for example. So also do consult with the store owner, the TO, when there is some customer service issue arise. Uh, sometimes two heads are always better than one. Uh, sometimes a quick discussion with the TO can also be a quick uh, service recovery, uh, maybe because of some prices involved. Sometimes maybe uh, if there is a error in the booster uh, pack given, uh, if you can ask the store owner nicely or the TO nicely, maybe they can also do a one-for-one -one replacement. So these are the things if you can actually consult uh, when, when there's somebody like the store owner there uh, in, in terms of customer service issues. These are some ways they can uh, interact. So another example of this is if the store owner or the TO actually knows the player better than you, uh, if you're not a regular in the uh, judging, re regular judge in the store, the store owner might have a better uh, experience or, or better, uh, more information of the player than, than you. So sometimes it's always good to consult as well. So uh, on things that we don't do, that like we should not do when we have to do a, a put for a judge call, uh, firstly, we try our best not to look forward. So we are here to judge the game and not be judged by people. So sometimes if you yawn, try to walk away, and then uh, it reflects, it really reflects badly on the judge and also the tournament organizer. So do ask the team leads if you need a break to refresh yourself or, or somebody uh, to cover, uh, to stand in for a short while, or if there's no, if you are the only judge, at least let the TO know. At least you can just quickly go for a quick uh, washroom break to refresh uh, freshen up yourself. Also, secondly, uh, try not to be too overconfident. Uh, rule anything that can go wrong will definitely go wrong sometimes. So if you have anything, do just check with another judge if you're unsure about a ruling. Mistakes do happen. Uh, sometimes giving the wrong rulings is not a... a, a Will, be, will also be backfired. So that's why it would be good if you are if, if you are not that confident, always just tell the players that uh we need to double check and then once we check and we can just get back to them the answer. Sometimes giving uh it's it's always better to, to double check sometimes. Also try not to talk like a robot. Uh try to speak with a little bit of enthusiasm. Uh try to uh reverse <clears throat> your voice a little and then uh also try to uh, answer the question without giving uh, strategy advice, but inject uh, some level of empathy uh, to, to the conversation as well. And then we should never interrupt another judge call because this is actually quite disrespectful. So 
uh, just always take note that uh, the rulings that you give uh, that's not related to you. So above all, uh, don't feel bad if you if you make any mistakes when doing uh, doing approach of Dutch call. Uh, everybody learns from from all this, and then we try our best to improve along the way. Uh, life, there's a saying there's there's always a lifelong learning, so we try to we always learn along the way. So what uh, if this is your first tournament ever? So question is, you definitely encounter uh, new tournament players. Uh, maybe be a this player just graduated from the Friday Night Magic or even playing at the Friday Night Magic or moving on to the next competitive events. <clears throat> so how you should do uh, as for, in terms of customer service to make them feel better, to make everybody feel better. So first, always smile and always be positive. Not, not the creepy uh, like, like uh, smile. So especially for newer players, they are usually when they, there's a judge call, they feel that there's, they have some uh, errors in the game and they are always very scared to be there. So always sometimes just give us a good smile, be positive, uh, and then try to give them a little bit of uh, 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 a way to, to, to tell them that uh, you are here to actually judge the game and you are here to actually enjoy the experience as well. And then spare them all the time they need, uh, but don't take too much time. So the more attention that they get, the more peaceful and more positive uh, their reaction will be to your rulings as well. And then try to answer every question. Uh, I would say that's no question. There's no such thing as a silly question. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, anything that can be asked, just just try to answer as much to 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 extent. And then if they feel that uh, there's anything, uh, always stay back to the game and then we try to explain to them after the game because uh, sometimes they are new they, uh, and you, if you are worried that you share some uh, strategic information. Uh, after the event, uh, after the game, uh, just put that aside and then you can explain to them uh, in detail. The reason uh, to do that is actually uh, that the game is still in play, so probably you don't want to take up the time. So it'd be always good to let the game finish and then uh, let the match finish and then put the player to the side and then you can explain to them the situation. Why do you give the ruling in such a way? And if, and, uh, if the player has anything to ask, feedback, you can also do that uh, during that time. <clears throat> so far, if there is any questions on this so far, anybody? How could I not? Some questions are coming in. Let me see. Okay. I thought I saw a question just now. Oh, yes. How could I not do feel bad when I make a mistake? Um, everybody will make mistakes. So even if you look at the uh uh MTR, uh where clear plays we make a mistake. Yes, for sure we, we learn from mistakes. So if you actually make uh, make one, uh always learn from that. So for, for my personal experience, I also gave wrong rulings before uh, earlier. Uh, so I'll try my best to actually explain the situation and, and then I will not overboot and, and think too much after the event. Just, just treat it as a learning experience. Say sorry to the player, explain why, why you actually gave that ruling in such a way. So you just explain uh, and, and let the player know. So do for definitely the player will actually feel feel very bad, uh, or they might even uh, uh be be very salty, and then they'll actually uh, explain and they'll tell you uh, and they'll go around. I'm not sure about uh uh Thailand, but in Singapore, players will always be salty, and then they'll complain. Everybody they say that hey, this judge actually made made a mistake. So in order for that not to happen, just explain why you actually gave that ruling in the first place back it up with some actions on, on why uh why you actually did that and then I explain to them uh that the correct procedure on how to actually get, get that right. Okay, next few questions um uh, okay feedback is not uh people get confused okay yes Shani healthy words spread very very quickly 
in Singapore, we do have such situations uh, pretty often. So when, when we have one, uh, one such incident, uh, things spread, like the whole community knows about this. Especially, uh, yeah, this is definitely not easy. And, and we, we try our best to, to do as much as we can in terms of customer service. So next, moving on, uh, we go to part two on how to deal with difficult players. So some basics on how to do customer service uh, on, on, on difficult players. So just now with the list, uh, <clears throat> so listen, empathize, <coughs> listen, empathize, apologize, to solve their problem and also thanking them. So we try to apply that to, 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 to this, uh, to, to do customer service uh, on, on dealing with difficult players. So, uh, during, uh, if you have uh, difficult players who try to make things difficult, uh, try your best to stick to the, the policy documents, uh, like IPG, uh, MTR, and then if they are absolutely so absolutely sore about it, uh, do also let them refer to the documents to see that, hey, uh, uh, I'm giving you a game loss because this is uh, IPG says so. Uh, if if really you get uh, if you can't talk your way through, just show them the policy documents. Always try to diffuse the situation if things get tense. So uh, just now mentioned earlier, if you actually do a smile, uh, uh, if you have a very nice smile, show them to to, to them. That will actually definitely help uh, in in getting uh. A little bit of diffusal as well. Uh, ultimately, always remain calm. Uh, speak confidently and don't shout. Try your best to separate the players if you need to, just like I mentioned earlier. Yep. Yes, yes, Sugan. Uh, the, the, the documents are here to protect us so that nobody will hunt us down. Yes. So getting back, uh, yes, we try to diffuse the situation as, well, as much as we can. Uh, we try our best to get things done uh, in, in a way. So try to become, uh, separate the players if you need. And then we try to explain to them uh, calm and confidently, but try our best not to shout. We try our best not to cover each other's voice over it. And then uh, ultimately, if... Uh, oh, yes, ultimately, if... Uh, there is a head judge in, uh, in, in the vicinity, uh, get them involved as well. So uh, always give the, play the players also when you know, after you give a ruling, uh, give them a chance to appeal. Uh, then you find yourself uh, reacting negatively, call for another judge to help you as well. So this way, at least uh, the players can also be, be there to help. So some of the common uh, player types. So just now, uh, Sugeng did share. So Sugeng did share like like the the, the different types of players. Uh, over here we also have uh, different players based on the, the common types of uh, uh people. So let me just let me just show. So I'll start with the first one, the insensitive commenter. So the player who doesn't think twice before saying anything. So can can, can you believe how gay this comes like? Extortionally, is it really raped me the last game? So, uh, sometimes uh, dealing with people, especially uh, in I'm not sure about uh Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia, we don't have that uh, much versus uh the 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 US and the EU. Uh, like I think recently in, in the judge uh chat, somebody were talking about the Pokemon community. Uh, somebody actually just got uh into some accidents for 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 giving some uh what's the thing uh he, he, they, I forgot what's the word yeah but they actually uh uh got got in some trouble on on that so so always try to think twice before you talk to but yeah I'm just sharing at least here here right now I'm just sharing the the different type of players the difficult the different type of difficult players that you will see. So if you see this style player, always try to educate them uh, first. So let them understand why is it bad uh, on, on, on committing uh, uh, things like that. Uh, everybody everybody in uh, has a different tolerance level. 
so you will not know how uh, tolerant they are in a certain behavior. And even a very small uh, uh, impact, like, like maybe my, maybe that, that sentence might not mean anything to you, but it might mean a lot to, to certain players. So always uh, try your best to think through before you do that. So in, if you want to deal with this stuff, people always try to explain the situation to them. And then from here, we actually try uh, to, to get them involved and, and, and let them know that this is actually not good. And then we have the shady dude, the shady dude where weird things happen whenever they're around. So this type of things like players have plays with their hands under the table, dropping cards on the floor, etc. Uh, we have an incident in Singapore where there is a, a player who will always cast a, 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 a uh, it was it was it was one of the my first few tournaments. Uh, it was a sealed event, so it was Teros uh, Teros Limited. This player always plays with his hands under the table, uh, and then always on turn three he'll cast this uh, heroic creature. Uh, like what was the name of the creature? It's it's a it's a white creature, three mana two two uh, double strike, and if you cast a heroic spell, it gets uh, it gets the uh, plus one plus one something. So. He always has that on turn three, and he always has a God's willing in his hand to protect that creature. So it it, it went it, uh it we didn't notice it at first in the first few tournaments, and then we started seeing that the player has been looking around, uh wondering his, his eyes wandering all around the table. Uh and then uh we, we noticed that his hands is under the table and he always has uh things. So we after that we actually found out that he actually he, some card. Oh yes, yes, Lugan, thank you. Yes, it's favorite hero. So he actually hit the card under his legs, which is when he sit down, he, he put it under under the legs. So he actually managed to swap the card. He managed to swap the card around and then cast the, the creature. Yeah. So that was one of the incidents that we found. So, however, uh, we will never accuse uh, uh, the, the player until you are very confident in your investigation. So we try to address the player by their name. And if they're tactful enough, we give them some indication that he is actually being watched. So we, we... So another type of player, uh, the player who always chats and chats and chats and chats nonstop. So, uh, Basically, oh, how long have you been playing? How long have oh, I've been so long since I've seen judges? Uh, do you know uh, how can I be a judge? This, this, I was, I'll classify them as the very uh, friendly player who is always there talking about this. And uh, we, we have, we have a few living examples in Singapore. I don't want to mention names, yeah, but we, we do have a few of the, these players everywhere in, in shops. And then um, try to be as friendly as possible, as much as you can. Try to listen, provide a listening ear. Uh, but then, of course, you still have to keep uh, focus on the most important task, which is actually uh, you are judging in the event. So when you're judging an event, you try to actually uh, pay, pay more attention to them. So, But then like, at least just, just uh, simple acknowledge, of, like, acknowledge that you can to, to say that you actually listen, uh, pay some attention to them. And then uh, if, if need be, try to politely interrupt them to say that, so sorry, uh, I understand, uh, but I need to be attending to, to the judge game right now. So just tell them that uh, you're yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, actually working and then hopefully that he will actually shut up. And then uh, if, if you have other players nearby, uh, you can also just hopefully we can pass the conversation to another person uh, as well, which is nearby and also help uh, if there's other judges so who, uh, nearby, we can actually just uh, signal to them and hopefully they can save you out of the situation. So, final, <laughs> coming up, find a opportunity to escape. Uh, and then, okay. and also the complainer. So, like we have the salty person, and also if, if, if they lost the game and then they'll go around also complaining to people. These are the things who always complains about every little thing and not being constructive. So it can be, uh, wow, why, why, why so long? Why the pairing so long? We've been waiting for for so long. How come the 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 event is like that? Oh, 
why the payout so expensive? Uh, so little. Why my why the entry fee so expensive? Everything in the world they can find, they probably can complain. So so same thing. We we try to address that concern and we try uh uh you know for that to them because ultimately um we try to diffuse as, as much as we can. We understand what's uh what's where he is coming from, and then also give them a offer a chance to, to the person to, to uh, get them to uh, explain why he finds it expensive, for example, or he finds it real bad, and then just give them a chance to explain or give such suggestions on how to improve. Sometimes, sometimes I acknowledge uh, just by a simple acknowledgement of their feedback it goes a long way as well. And then uh, do point out uh, what what's the, the ultimate, this, this Yes, sure. Sounds like everybody, every player. <laughs> yeah. So don't, don't give them a chance to point out the uh their this this satisfaction, and then from there we offer offer them opportunity to talk about it. And then uh we move on also to uh some of the smartest. So the player who also uh they never they, they don't need any harm, but then they always have uh issue with some buildings. So, for example, uh, he drew extra card. So, I guess it's a game loss, right? Players can just go with the score. So, yeah. And then, uh, so sometimes play. So sometimes I play. People listen to this, and they uh, play actually scoops the card, and before you can actually give the official ruling from from the judge. So sometimes, uh, sometimes, uh, hopefully the the smart ass is correct. Uh, but sometimes in some situations, if the uh the, the player might not know the ruling that well, uh that can backfire. Yes, son. Yes, lose lawyer to one choose to win. Yes, that's actually exactly what it is. So we try our best to we try our best to to, to get uh things sorted. So we, we try our best to disarm him uh in a way that uh, we, we compliment the person that he is actually good in his knowledge. Uh, before we tell them he is actually wrong in his rulings, if he actually gave a wrong ruling, and and then we remind him gently that uh, uh only a judge could issue rulings and penalties, and if the anything else uh there will be a H judge uh has that has the final say in the tournament. Yes, so ultimately uh just also tell the player that uh the rulings that you you give is correct or wrong. So the next difficult player that we have uh, is the not so incredible hawk. Uh, so basically, this this uh, I actually removed the video. So actually, there is a video uh, previously. So uh, it was a, a person flipping the table uh, when when you play halfway uh, halfway through and you find uh, feel that the event uh, the the player is actually giving some uh, issues and then he actually flips the table. Yes, what's the game? Yeah. So ultimately, if you want to deal with these style of players, uh, always keep calm. Uh, angry versus angry will never work out well. So position yourself with confidence and answer him with a firm tone. Uh, try to keep your voice as calm as possible and be polite. Uh, be firm, but politely. So step in and ask why uh, do you need to step away from the player to calm the, uh, from the table to calm yourself down? Offer this in a helpful tone, like for example, are you okay? Do you need a moment to stay away? I can give you extra time. Uh, these are some of the examples that you can use uh, to diffuse the situation. And then try to uh, address his behavior and how it will affect others. So for example, I need you to be calm. Uh, you're actually making people feel uncomfortable around you. Uh, you can see nearby uh, all the players are actually looking at you right now. Uh, if you need... Uh, if you need anything, don't be afraid. I can ask you. Uh, I can help you. And if things get well, we can also tell them to leave the venue if need be. If things all gets physical, uh, try to uh stay calm and diffuse the situation as much as you can. Uh, always protect others and also yourself, because ultimately, uh, we are still human beings. Uh, we also don't want ourselves to get into uh involved into some physical fights. So uh, address the safety of the players and the people around you.
So just a quick recap. Uh, the least method, listen, empathize, apologize, solve, and say thank you to the player. So this is a simple way to uh, for, for a quick uh, customer service. Try to be positive in every situation that you handle. So handle every situation tactfully while being mindful of the current situation. And then always service with a smile. Yes, this, this is actually the simplest body language that you can uh, have impact on, on any agitated, uh, agitated player. I paper that sometimes outside assistance and then players become incredible. Yes, this is like something I agree with. Yes, so ultimately, uh, smiling actually works very well. It's, it's one of the simplest body language and then uh, you have good uh, positive effects uh, on any agitated player. From there, uh, if things don't work out well, uh, get more help. Uh, we try to uh, tend to any of the situation as much as we can. Yep. And then we move on to the feedback loop. So ultimately for being doing home customer service, we also uh, wants to receive feedback as much as we can. So why are feedbacks important for judges? Ultimately, uh, most importantly, it helps us improve. Uh, getting positive or negative feedback is important. Uh, construction criticism is definitely very important. We actually, uh, it, it can actually help uh, difficult and newer judges uh, bring, bring up some of uh, this. And then uh, be, it autom be it the giver or the receiver, uh, it will actually help people grow. So same thing, uh, this is also one of the reasons why we always ask people to fill up feedbacks after conferences, we also could ask people to uh, give feedback immediately. <clears throat> Previously, when we, uh, we do events uh, in, in GPs, uh, Z will actually have tokens. Uh, we have those flash feedback cards that we can actually just give people on spot. So this, uh, this is something that we, we do previously. So feedback is also very important because it actually strengthens trust between Dutch players and players. Uh, so it actually allows a uh, way to be more harmonious, I would say. It also helps to bring up the positive culture. So it's always a good two-way communication between uh, people and players. And then also this is actually a way to be uh, a mature culture, open up to everybody, and it will definitely be uh, positive, uh, beneficial for the community as well. Uh, I personally feel that it actually motivates the receiver once I receive. So I'm, I'm, I hope that I have plenty of feedback as well. I can both good and bad feedback right? because this is, what, this is something that I will talk to me as well. Previously, I received feedback from people that I that actually speak too fast. So this time around, I'm trying to speak a little bit slower because I try to pack as content, too much content in, in that one hour. So and, and I often speak too fast. So this is something that I learned as well. So I try my best to, to speak a little bit slower so that at least uh, for people who actually be, uh, who's not, uh, uh, his first language is probably not English, you'll also be able to understand as well. So this is some, uh, my, from my personal experience. So the simplest, even the simplest feedback uh, could be uh, to make a judge uh, of the day. So it also uh, reinforces positive behavior. So, uh, a simple thank you or some uh, a good job for, uh, will also uh, be a very good feedback as well. So uh, giving feedback is also a very important leadership trait. So especially uh, you as a senior judge, uh, giving feedback to, to, to the newer judges uh, based on the experience that you have, uh, this is also one good way to be uh, to, to move up the leadership channel. Uh, so that giving and receiving feedback can also uh, uh, have some conflicts to discuss and that also be a, uh, like you can bring out certain examples, explain to the players, uh, to, the, to the newer judges on why uh, this is a thing and you, you can also open up for discussion as well. 
And then moving on, uh, the different types of feedbacks. Uh, we have over here, we have four types of feedback. So we have the appreciative feedback. So appreciative feedback is uh, someone ap approaching you and then giving you compliments uh, for doing something positive or something uh, or thank you for your service. So for example, well done on the deck checks today. And then we have something like a critical feedback. A critical feedback is like potential gaps or deficiency in areas that uh, the giver has noticed that you are you 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 have something uh, that needs improving, so he'll tell you that's a uh, so this is actually a critical feedback. So like for example, you need to stop writing. You need to uh you need to do certain stuff and certain for example, and then we have the coaching feedback as well. So it guides the receiver, and in things in, in terms of how to do things better. So feedback that touches more on guidance and how tools to help the receiving judge achieve their goals. And then we also have emotional feedback. Emotional feedback, for example, uh, is the smile is really good. Okay. Uh, these are open and direct feedback from on, on someone's action uh, that is uh, incredible and intrinsic value, but may or may not be related to judging. So these are like an example. Yeah, I'm looking at the comments from Chong Lam and Brighton. Yeah, if things get escalated well and, and you can inform the TO, uh, hopefully he also knows how to, how to de-escalate the situation. Because ultimately the TO uh, knows the, the their player base well enough and these are the people who always uh, come to the store. Yeah, so this is also, also one of the ways to, to, to de-escalate. And then what Brighton says as well, uh, you can evolve the security of the place as one. And then uh, move on to accepting different types of feedback and how we actually phrase your feedback. So we have the feedback sandwich over at your right. So basically, before you give a feedback, always try to, to make it into a burger or a sandwich. So give something positive, followed by something negative and then something positive again to, to, to close off the loop. So like, for example, uh, yeah, so for example, you can say like things, things like, hey, hey, you have been doing well in this particular aspect. So you have been doing well in this particular aspect. However, you need improvement in, in this. Overall, you have been doing well in this. So this is how you can structure your, your uh, giving a feedback. So <laughs> the receiver may potentially feel lost or feel dismissed uh, if you don't uh, if you give them uh, directly a negative feedback. Pass uh, one of the reasons why we always uh, prefer to give a, a feedback sandwich in a way we give a positive and uh, followed by a negative and then a positive one. This is something that we feel that will work best. In, in a way that if you give a, if you give the negative uh, feedback immediately, uh, they might be potentially feel lost and be dismissed. So this is why we, we feel that uh, we, we should we should do this. So ensure your also ultimately ensure your feedback offers a, a path forward, like giving some measurable goals, like uh, subject identity that why what are things that you feel that you can improve, share resources with the with the person that you're giving feedback, uh, like where they can uh, refer back to this, like for example, some articles or some books or uh, things that are, uh, even some online classes, like maybe for example, angle management or, or things like that. So for them to, to continue giving them a chance to grow. So uh, some people might not be uh, receptive to listening or they might take things too harshly due to uh, outside influence. Maybe for that day, they have been, uh, it has been a rough day for the, 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 the person. So these are some ways that you actually help to tone, tone things down. And then uh, for, for coaching feedback, sometimes you can feel cold and indifferent. Uh, 
it might uh, uh, it might impact somebody's mood negatively, especially uh, going through a, a long day. And then, uh, so ultimately, why we recommend giving the using the feedback loop, the uh, feedback sandwich in a way, because we give them the positive kick off, followed by a coaching session, and then closing off with good encouragements uh, for for the for the particular person that is receiving the feedback. Especially if the feedback is especially uh, particularly harsh, don't deliver it in front of other judges. Try to pull the judges aside uh, to a corner or to somewhere else. Maybe uh, if you have some time to talk to me, maybe you can go somewhere else and then we can discuss the situation uh, away from the playing tables or even away from other judges if, if necessary. <clears throat> Consider waiting to the end of the day uh, so that their work performance is also not affected. So ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, if they have time, just sit them, them down in the corner. You can have a one-to-one -one private discussion with them and how to get things done, how things can get done better. So how do we give a good feedback? So we can use this uh, very simple uh, way to, to go about it. We can use this three acronym CAT because the reason why we chose CAT is because Everybody loves cats, the mother of cats. We have a lot of uh, people who love cats. So we, C stands for clear and specific with examples. A is actionable insights. T is tactful and never a personal negative feed attack. So for example, uh, clear and specific with examples. So for example, you are uh, you have been quite report resourceful. I like how you manage to make uh, make sure players stand using the table uh, table as suggest. So these are ways to be uh, clear and specific. And then actionable insights. Nice job making the player board uh, pairing board easier to read. Keep it up. And then helpful for example. Uh, no offense. I, I think that you need to adjust your tone and be friendlier when giving your rulings. So these are some of the examples. Uh, most importantly is have an uh, open discussion with your receiver as certain circumstances may not be privy to you. It may also change the results on your initial assessment of the person. Okay, so same thing, we back to the burger. So this is one example of uh, feedback. So uh, if you are giving write them a uh, so this is how we actually do it. So this is from day one. This is the first way. So basically, you give them a good, uh, uh, good uh, actionable insights on how you write this. So basically, this is what you expect and how you focus on shadowing uh, uh, and observing players. And then clear specific examples, like how you move the pairing board at a certain time, uh, the things that be rounds, etc. And then uh, ways to at least uh, not uh, be, be non personal attackful. So, talk to the judges on the floor, stay professional. Yep, so this is one example. And then moving on, uh, simple closing thoughts that we have. So, that's what a review is at the end of the day it's an investment in someone else's success and continued growth. And then, uh, Ultimately, it's also the investment to the judge program, and we are here to help everybody. I am done with the presentation. Uh, any Q and A? Any questions? Anybody has in the, uh, in the in the, have any difficulty to share? Any questions in from the presentation? With me? Feel free to type in the chat. If we to do that, I can at least look at the chat and explain as well. If there is no questions, I'm done. So thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening to this. And thank you for all the feedback and the, the chats uh, given in, in, uh, in, in the meeting in uh, throughout this.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Neo. Thank you. All right. If anyone has any questions, now's the time. You can post it still. Uh, Neo will answer if you need to. Yep. If not, that is the end for today. Thank you so much, everyone.